Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for being here today and for your time, and thank you for the Fertile Ground for hosting us today. Uh, my name is A.J. Davidson. I'm Ben Street. And uh, we are proud to present to you our company, Shovel Solutions, and our software product that we call Shovel. So we've built a digital marketplace and logistics platform for the dirt pad laying industry and the greater construction and mineral foundation uh, industries as well. And what we've done is we've taken um, all of the business activity uh, and information that goes on in this process and everyone involved and we've put it on one platform. And this is a prerequisite process that touches everything that we live in, work in, look at, drive on, it's everywhere. Um, and it's conducted by three major uh, actors in this process. Uh, you have a jobber who is going to be your uh, contractor. They are going to be the customer involved in this process. They're going to reach out to a mineral pit. They're going to be looking for a certain kind of product and the pit that they find that has it they are then going to work with a team of dump truck drivers and coordinate that effort to take that product from pickup at the mineral pit to drop off at the job site. So the current life cycle, if you don't have shovel, there's a job site. They call the pit that they know, which is not necessarily the best or the closest. Then they figure out how many trucks they need, how many loads they need, and then they scramble to find them. Um, what happens is, is they're counting the pit has tally marks, the trucks have you know, hole punches or tally marks, and the job site has hole punches and tally marks. Nine times out of 10, at the end of the job, all three parties have three different numbers. So it's a nightmare. Time and money is lost. And it's because of these manually based processes uh, that lead to data and, and record keeping that is completely unreliable that will lead to those kinds of losses for everyone involved. So in this next slide, if you look at lost product, this is $8,000 that a job lost. Um, what happened is the trucks didn't like the rate on the job, so they drove halfway, dumped their, their load, and drove back to the pit and got some more hole punches. The jobber actually paid for product he never received. If you look to the right, um, this is tally marks at the job site. I've never met a perfect person, and I've never seen a perfect tally sheet. So um, time and money is lost with the tally sheet as well. The pain points, the jobbers never know uh, what trucks are going to show up. They can never prove what loads have and have not been delivered. Pits have three and four jobs going on at the same time, sometimes 40 to 50 trucks. So it's very easy to put the wrong tally on the wrong truck. Truckers can't always prove that they've delivered set amount of loads. They uh, have to take the jobs that they know are available, not necessarily the best ones. Um, and also they have to run down three and four checks on Friday versus staying on the road and uh, keep working. So. And to piggyback off of these pain points, we've realized that this is an industry that is technologically famished and underserved. And it's because of high barriers of products that are too time consuming and costly uh, for these businesses for it to make sense for them to incorporate that into their process. Uh, and also these products are, um, the pricing of them can either be too high or just flat out too opaque for them to uh, be able to understand and, and make reason of for it to, to find value in what they're doing. So in tandem to that, with uh, current trends that are going on with cities growing, also people leaving those cities uh, and smaller communities growing as well. Um, and with these recent world events that we've had over the past few years, uh, with a market rebounding uh, in some areas, uh, slower growth than others, uh, we found that the shovel gospel uh, can resonate with a wide a range of customers, not only here in Mississippi, but uh, throughout the United States as well. Now, to talk about the technology, Shovel is articulated through three user interfaces. And what we specialize in is triangulating, automating, and locating product every single step along the process. And we're able to do that comprehensively through what we call the Shovel Network, which is really just a public space for jobbers to be able to post their work, for pits to be able to receive product requests, and for these truck drivers to be able to find work at all times and finish a job and find the next one right after that. Shovel is a software as a service in presentation. Uh, we, uh, as our foundation, accounting, logistics, and marketplace are what, what our hallmarks are. And um, we are cloud-based. Uh, we have many integration opportunities ahead of us. Uh, and as far as where we are currently, a quick recap, we uh, started beta trialing in November of last year, and since then have been able to launch a progressive web application during those trials. Um, in, uh, in the spring at the end of quarter one, and we've been able to launch our product uh, in June this year uh, with a website that is established, that is set to grow, uh, and, and, and well as we have uh, efforts in terms of re 
you know, protecting our, our, what we've built in our intellectual property uh, as we speak. So the life cycle with a shovel, there's a job site. I t they type in the mineral that they're looking for. A map pops up with the pits that have the mineral they're looking for. He then types in the uh, number of loads he wants and the number of trucks and the price that he's going to pay the trucks. Uh, then goes to a load board. The trucks can pick the job that they like. It GPSs the truck to the pit, GPSs them to the job site, keeps the load count, and at the end of the job, the truckers are paid with a touch of a button, and so is the pit. And all of this happens on shovel, one platform, and from end to end, start to finish, you have reliable record keeping that everyone is privy and has access to in the palm of their hands. Now, as far as the, the solution of shovel itself, across the board, uh, all of these users suffer from, uh, you know, like Ben mentioned, poor project management, project activity. So with Shovel, they have uh, a new resource to uh, improve uh, those elements of their business. Uh, we have also completely done away with the paper ticketing process, which is completely asinine that we live in 2022 and we're still using hole punchers, but here we are. So now we've been able to digitize that as well as make it very easy for people to pay people for their services rendered and for those people who have conducted those services and given that product for them to receive money without having to burn the diesel fuel to go hunt it down and take it to the bank. And as a full subscription user, uh, paying user, uh, like we mentioned, it's a fully integrated experience with everyone involved. It's automated. It gives them live project activity, not at the end of the day or at the, in the morning, but every second they want to open the app and look at their phone. Um, and with that shovel network access, no one's left in the dark. And this product is not limited to one certain actor in this process. And having been able to launch this summer, uh, we've been very grateful to receive great feedback. Uh, we have live users. Uh, and with that feedback, uh, we've been able to also understand what we need to do to make our product better. For example, uh, make sure that payment can be received quicker by these users um, in, 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 instead of kind of maybe like a one-to-day process like we have right now, we're looking to ways to make it more immediate. Right here we have three screenshots of what it looks like using Shovel. The first screenshot we have is uh, kind of a high-level look at uh, an itemization and listing of a jobber's projects. If you were to zoom in a little bit, you'd be able to go into that project and look at high-level details of uh, what that project consists of, the product, the price, as well as your roster of truckers that are carrying your product for you and how much dirt that they've delivered. Um, if you take that one step further, we also make sure that uh, it's important that we capture not only when the product was picked up, uh, but when it was dropped off, how long it took for that product to get from point A to point B, and who carried that load each time, whether it's a 10 load project or a 1,000 load project. Now our market, uh, we are non-discriminatory to any kind of construction. We are looking for residential, we're looking for commercial construction. Uh, like we mentioned, it's also kind of been slow uh, due to recent events, uh, and right now we're starting to see that rebound. And global construction as a whole, uh, revenue up until 2025 is projected to be $15 trillion, and looking towards 2035, uh, an investment of $65 trillion, and that's what we want to be a part of. We know we can fit into that, uh, that puzzle, and we can be a, a part of uh, the earth that's being moved to conduct that construction. Um, we have a list of people who are wanting to use our product. We were able to accumulate that during our beta trialing, uh, and right now we are beginning to tap in to that list as we speak. Uh, we have a total of 50 downloads right now, uh, but we are slowly wading into our user group and making sure that everyone has a great experience. We're currently working with 15 to 20 active users at the moment, and we have uh, two new projects popping up as soon as Monday, uh, adding probably uh, between five and 10 new users that we haven't worked with in the past. Um, and this is not just a product that exists for Jackson, Mississippi. This is not a product that just exists for Mississippi. It exists for every city and state in this union and beyond our borders as well. Uh, they have to build homes uh, in other parts of the world too. And that's, uh, in the long vision of ours, is something that we expect to be a part of. So our business model is obviously uh, subscription-based. We're going to give it to our consumers 60 days for free so they can see the ease that they're able to find work and their finances grow. Um, we have progressive pricing. We had a base model. We, after do, talking to some, some pits specifically, we realized that we can charge them a little more. 
um, white label opportunities. We have other industries that are seeking, seeking our help, and we are excited to get started on that. But obviously, we're focusing on foundations first. We will have revenue by the end of 2022, but significantly more in 23. How we plan to reach this market uh, is to target both small and large communities. Micropolitans are one of our favorites because those are going to be the communities that grow and become bigger uh, as time passes. Uh, we plan to reach these communities via both traditional and digital marketing efforts, um, specifically for digital marketing, using a hyper-local campaign uh, resource to uh, make sure that no matter where we're finding users, um, we can make sure we can target them digitally in the most cost-effective manner. And long-term, we'd like to start establishing partnerships with like-minded businesses and products in this larger construction industry, with dump truck uh, brands, um, other kinds of construction groups, to make sure that they know that we're a representative that can be relied on uh, for the same kind of uh, activity that their, their other customers are looking to them uh, and buying products uh, that they offer. So uh, for a three-year forecast, having started this summer, uh, we believe that by the end of this year we can reach 225 users and uh, after three years, uh, very conservatively believe that 2,000 users and just a little bit north is something that is very attainable for us. Uh, we also believe that that number could be much higher, but as we start to um, uh, gain and, and raise more resource, uh, that number can grow. Now for our goals for development and for expansion is two-prong. We want to be able to grow our team. We want to be able to add more developers uh, so we can turn around updates uh, and improvements to our product in a more timely manner. We need more sales and boots on the ground for Ben and I. Uh, there's a lot of ground to cover, and we need uh, people who can also speak this language and sell our product uh, while we are too. In managerial, we have uh, vested interest uh, of, of members currently involved on our team that we know have a plethora of experience uh, that, that can only be beneficial for us. So uh, developing um, that, raising money for it, uh, our team is already stacked. Uh, we could not have done what we've created today uh, without them. And as we move forward, Shovel makes history, it keeps promises, and it tracks products. Our users are growing, and having launched this summer, we've moved over $15,000 worth of live project activity. We're getting feedback and evolving our product as we speak, and with revenue coming by the end of the year, it's going to allow us to roll out to Mississippi and parts of Alabama, and also start working with much larger general contracting groups by the end of this year. We've moved over $100,000 with the beta testing stuff, but we've actually processed people getting paid through Shovel $15,000. $15,000. We'd like to open this time for questions, and if you have any questions you don't want to ask right now, you're more than welcome to just reach out to either one of us. Yes, sir. Hey, I heard you say something really in your presentation about contractor puts out a question letter and your contractor doesn't get paid so the uh, the supplier doesn't pick the job the jobber that is has the job site picks the supplier of his choice and then based on the it'll tell him the estimated time and the mileage and based on that the jobber is the jobber's duty to make an attractive price so the truckers see it and they're like, yes, that's a good job, let me have it. If no one picks it, obviously he knows something's wrong, like the pricing. Does that, does that answer your question? I didn't see how if you got a bad load or a bad price that you could get it, get it dispatched. Well, that's if it has to be worked out. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Well, it has to be worth everyone's time to do something, and if it's not worth their time, they're not going to do it. Um, if it's not worth my time, I'm not going to pick it. So if no one picks it after a day or two, uh, I feel like the jobber would know he needs to up the price to make it more attractive for truckers. And for, ex for example, um, Ben, uh, a pit that he works with, uh, has a proje project that has come up recently where they weren't paying the trucks high enough, so there were no trucks on the job. So he has two options. He can either abandon the job or he can raise his prices. So with Shovel on the app from the jobber's perspective, they can go on there. If they see that they're not getting any bites, they can go in and modify that project information and make sure that it's uh, a little bit more competitive to what the market would be requesting at the time. That all sounds good, but what if you did it in a timely manner? Most of those contractors want it there when they want it. 
Yes, sir. Uh, I've seen timely manner jobs, and I, I like those because they generally pay me more. Um, but I haven't ran into that situation, so we'll just have to see what happens. And at this moment, we, um, we don't uh, have this uh, ingrained in Shovel right now. So if, if you ran into this issue, you would have to go in and, and edit like we've mentioned. But there are future opportunities for us to monetize um, Shovel and allow jobbers to uh, maybe bring more attention to the jobs that they are marketing. And if they're not getting any attention to it, uh, then we're going to find ways to be able to, uh, for us as a company, to make money uh, for them to uh, boost for example, that job and um, maybe bring more exposure to it after they've made those adjustments to a more competitive price. Yes, sir. You had a slide that talked about blockchain integration. Do you mind elaborating on that? Yes, sir. So um, we are, the data that we are collecting is uh, between, you know, three large user groups and the way our uh, development team has built this has been uh, very agile and it's going, as we create, um, more uh, more data, and we collect we collect more data. They're going to have uh, we're going to have the ability to start aggregating that in a form of a blockchain. And uh, we've had future discussions, uh, not anything that we've gone too far into detail about, uh, but we're going to be able to start using that data and, and hopefully monetizing it and potentially start selling it. Uh, like Dirtcoin would would be a, a pretty great coin in my opinion but uh, that, that that would be the goal of that uh, but it's not something we're super focused on at the moment but we've built our platform uh, to to be ready for that as we as we get closer to those opportunities Bitcoin I like that too Bitcoin I like it yes sir yes sir with the jobber as the primary subscriber for show and at the cost of, of the uh, technologies would be primarily borne by him and by the end user. What cost uh, is assumed by the, the, the trucker and uh, the kid? Uh, is it a tiered cost structure or how do they integrate and, and, and what's their cost? So, so we started off with a, a base model. Uh, where we were just going to charge everyone a flat rate. Uh, ben mentioned that we are learning more uh, from our users and the cost savings that we're going to be able to provide for them. So we are creating, what we have created is a volume-based tier model to where for all of these solo truckers, and those are truckers that are not a part of a fleet, um, those are kind of like the littlest guy in this process. So we're going to charge them a flat rate no matter what. For the fleets, we're also going to charge them a flat rate, but we're going to charge them $50 per additional truck that they add to their fleet. Um, now, for pits and for jobbers, they're going to be the ones that are, are going to be calling out and, and uh, uh, you know, creating the opportunity for the volume to be moved. So pits are going to have a lot of volume coming through. So what we're doing is we're going to be charging them $500 uh, a month for uh, 750 loads, and we're going to be able to charge them 700, uh, sorry, $850 for 1,000 loads. And for jobbers, we're going to keep it across the board for $250 for those 500 loads uh, and bring that to $450 for 1,000 loads moved. So we do want to offer a tier model that has almost a better pricing incentive if you jump on with, a, with one of the subscription options that could give you, I guess, more dirt tokens. That's not a real thing, but it is now. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it, but if, if you were to, to go into that larger model, then you would almost have a lower price per unit that you would be paying for, so it, it would almost be more appealing. Uh, but for pits especially, I mean, they, they could, a, a slow pit could move 1,000 you know, loads of dirt a month. A busy pit could move 3,000 loads, and that's a lot of money. And you know, why we did this volume-based tier model is because it costs money to facilitate all of this business coming through, and that volume is not cheap. So. That's how we've adapted it, and we realized the flat rate for everyone was not going to cut it in the long run. So we're out of time. Thank you all. Thank you all.